Lifestyle in the South is a total different experience than here in the Midwest in regards to how people act, the food we eat, and the overall culture of living in the South. Demetrius, who is from Atlanta, Georgia, and I from Mobile, Alabama, will take you all through a virtual experience of how we live before coming to Ball State. We will take you through the culture of our two southern cities and let you all observe and possibly encourage you all to come and visit one day. Alabama does not have much, but one thing we pride ourselves on is college football. Football is basically all we have. No professional teams, but two of the biggest colleges in the nation. As you know, the biggest colleges bring the biggest robberies. However, these two colleges have the biggest in college football, named the Iron Bowl. This game is for bragging rights of the entire state, so it's more than just a record on the line. No matter how good or bad each team is, this game leads to intense warfare throughout households across the state. Suddenly, there's a blowout that occurs, but usually a miracle is bound to happen, such as the famous kick six of 2013. Yards. Number eight block kick can go the other way, too. He's got to be careful and get it up. On the way. No, returned by Chris Davis. Davis goes left. Davis gets a block. Davis has another block. Chris Davis. No flags. Touchdown. Auburn. It's always a great draw for Auburn fans when Auburn wins. But Alabama fans never take losing lightly. Shit. You ain't 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 shit. You ain't, shit. You ain't never been shit. Oh! oh my God. You broke your TV. Now no one can now watch it. Now we don't know what happened. Now no one can watch it. Mardi Gras is a seasonal event that comes to the city for approximately two and a half weeks. Mardi Gras is a series of parades of the carnival celebration beginning after the Christian feast of the Epiphany and culminating on the day before Ash Wednesday. But us Mobilians just look at it as a time of the year to enjoy family, food, loud music, and parades. At these parades, there are numerous floats that throw moon pies, beads, and toys for the enjoyment of the people. On the last day of Mardi Gras, which is named Fat Tuesday, there are parades throughout the entire day full of floats, and HBC marching bands. These, these bands course through the entire downtown area, and this is sort of like a holiday for us since it is a nationwide event held in our hometown. You might have heard about it in New Orleans, but Mobile was actually the founder. The South is known for its Southern style cooking. We call it soul food. Indeed, it seems good for the soul because it tastes so good but it's bad for the body because it causes obesity, diabetes, and high blood pressure. Alabama ranks at number three in the most unhealthiest states in America. However, we take pride in our food. In the South, everything is preferred to be fried, unless your health is at risk or you're on a diet. We all know it's the unhealthiest way to cook foods, but we cannot fight our temptations, even if we know of the consequences. Atlanta is one of the most well-known cities in the U.S., but we are famously known for our airport, Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport, which is the world's busiest airport by total passenger traffic. We also have an aquarium as well as a zoo. The Georgia Aquarium houses more than 100,000 animals and represents several thousand of species. Zoo Atlanta is home to many animals, however, it is one of the four zoos in the country that houses giant pandas. We also have the World of Coca-Cola, Atlanta Botanical Garden, the Bodies Exhibit, Fox Theater, and the famous Martin Luther King Jr. National Historical Park. Atlanta has a great culture, however, the staple of the culture is, is music and sports. Music is a big part of Atlanta's identity. There was a point in time where 
hip hop was only recognizably represented by the East Coast with rappers like the Notorious B.I.G. and the West Coast with rappers like Tupac with their gangster rap style. It wasn't until a two-man group called Outkast, created by Andre 3000 and Big Boy, emerged out of the heart of Atlanta with their unique style of rap and appearance that got Atlanta on the scene. With their hit song, AT Aliens, Outkast created a trend and a word to represent us upcoming natives, the AT Aliens. Once Atlanta's foot was in the rap game's door, the Goody Mob, TLC, and other Atlanta-based artists would dominate the sound of rap. In the early 2000s, artists Lil Jon and the East Side Boys, with their crunk style of rap, was able to introduce Atlanta into the popular culture. Songs like Yeah by Lil Jon, Ludacris, and Usher won a Grammy and made top charts in many other countries. By the late 2000s, Atlanta had shifted from being on the map to the center of hip hop. In present day Atlanta, music has continued to influence and dominate the rap game with this unique style and flow. Artists like Young Thug, Future, Migos, T.I., Sierra, and so many more have continued down the road that the outcasts paved for them. Atlanta is known for their teams in the big three sports of the U.S. Each team has done something special in sports history. However, oftentimes it is in negative light, meaning that these teams often accomplish great things but end up falling short on the grand prize. Those who are familiar with sports in Atlanta know we call it the Atlanta curse. There is only one team in Atlanta history that has brought a championship to the city. That team is the 1995 Atlanta Braves. Since then, the Braves have not been to another World Series. The next closest team to win a championship was the Atlanta Falcons. In 2016, the Atlanta Falcons went to Super Bowl 51 and played the New England Patriots. The Falcons lost embarrassingly as the New England Patriots came back from a 25-point deficit and won 34-28. The 2015 Atlanta Hawks won 60 games in the regular season and made it all the way to the conference final for the first time in Hawks history, but was swept by the Cleveland Cavaliers it doesn't just stop in Atlanta. The University of Georgia, located in Athens, Georgia, went to the college football national championship and lost to Alabama, Malcolm's team, in overtime, losing in the most Atlanta way. We asked a couple of our teammates who are from Atlanta about the South and the transition from being home to coming here to Ball State in the Midwest. Here are their interviews. The biggest change from coming down South, coming up North, is probably the culture of the people and probably just the different types of people up here. Down South, you know, it's kind of more country down there and then the people talk different and it's way more, for the area I'm from, it's way more African American people. So coming up here, I'm getting more used to seeing like other different types of people and diversity of people. So that's a big difference. The uh, thing I miss the most really is the food. Like we got good fried chicken, you know, desserts, everything, peach cobbler, apple pie. Uh, I miss, miss my family, you know, that's nine and a half hours away. So that's really, that's probably the biggest. Uh, I, uh, when I'm back there, I used to go to the mall, see celebrities and everything. Like everywhere I go, you see celebrities. So that's another uh, thing I miss. Also, like just the city, like how nice it is. How everybody like just go to the city, have fun, and like just enjoy themselves. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Living in South was real good, you know. Uh, all year round, got good weather. You can do stuff outside all year round. If you want to go swimming in, in the fall and in the winter, you can do that. If you want to play baseball in the fall and winter, you can do that. It's not cold. You can play football in the fall and winter too. And like, there's plenty of attractions in the south too, especially in the Atlanta area. You got the Georgia Aquarium. You can go to that. You got the World of Coke. You got the CNN Center. You got the uh, College Football Hall of Fame. So there's plenty of stuff to do down south. You can never get bored. Um, the food was also real good, you know, we take pride in comfort food, so 
you know, you you want fried chicken, mac and cheese, collard greens, all that, got all that. So the food is real good down south too. Shoot, I'll probably move back to the crib just because uh, I like the food better. Uh, I think the food is more seasoned mm-hmm. down here or down there, and uh, it's more fried food. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like home cooked, and you know I like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Maybe my grandma cooked it. And then uh, the weather, you know what I'm saying? The weather down there is so much better than up here. Mm-hmm. It's too cold up here, too cold. Mm-hmm. You know, you get all the seasons and it'd be cold year round and near beside the summer. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, down there, it'd be good weather, mm-hmm. nice and chill. And then the people in the hospitality is good. Uh, it's just like Southern hospitality up here, you know, people are nice, but it's just not like, you know, a good Southern person. Mm-hmm. And then scenery, or I like the beaches, you know, all that. It's the greener down there, you know what I'm saying? A lot more stuff to look at up here. It's a lot of snow and fields, and you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't too clean. As you can see, living in the South is a totally different experience than living in the Midwest. Everybody has their preferences on where they would like to live. However, as the saying goes, you can't beat the South.